No means no. No. No? No. It doesn't? No means no. <laughs> no does not mean yes. It means no. And it's not exactly no what you think. And obviously, that's a statement about personal boundaries right. and saying no to people that are trying to unload their projects on you. You know, when people are doing this arguing thing back and forth, it's like they always feel like the other person is being unreasonable. Right. You know, but again, when you're dealing with somebody on the other side who's very argumentative, you've got to try to minimize the communication. I mean, I always tell people it should be no more than a couple lines. If you're writing paragraphs, you're doing this all wrong because you're inviting that opportunity to come back and argue with you. And you know what? Here's the thing too. If you are known as being cooperative, then you're not going to have as much argument when you're not right. because they'll know that normally you do. But if you say no every time, you know, then you're creating a situation where they're expecting you to yeah. say no. They're expecting to have a problem with you. You know, Thomas's ex-wife, you know, we we accommodate almost every single thing she asks for because I just if I can, I do. If I can make it work, even if I can rearrange and cause us some inconvenience, if I can make it work, I do. And subsequently, you know, if we say, I'm sorry, we can't, then she knows we honestly right. can't. That's not about trying to make her suffer in some way or deny her what she wants. It's just a matter of we can't make it work. One of the things you can do is if you can come up with two options, like let's say in this situation that uh, he says, well, grandpa's coming this weekend and I'd like to take him, but you already have tickets to the train museum. Then you could say, well, you know, I've already bought non-refundable tickets to the train museum and I really can't afford another set. Yeah. So I'd be happy to trade with you if you would, if you could maybe reimburse me right. for the cost of the tickets. Or maybe you could talk to your dad about about going yourself. About coming in to, yeah, about taking, about the two of you taking him to the train museum and buying another ticket. Or maybe your dad can reschedule his trip for the following weekend. If you can come up with like a couple of creative solutions like that, then I, and you, and you can honestly like not care which one the other parent picks, then you could float both out and say, what do you think? Right. And then what happens is either one they choose, you don't care. <laughs> And it makes them feel, if you're dealing with somebody with these issues, it makes them feel like they're in control. And they, like that would be, if in mine and Thomas's situation where I'm the control enthusiast, that would be a good thing for him to do is maybe send me a thing of like two different options if we were in that situation and say, hey, Tammy, what do you think about us doing one of these two things? And then I'm choosing, so I feel in control and I feel like I had a say in what happened, which is, you know, a big thing for me. And so you have to kind of know your co-parent and know who you're dealing with. But people get so bogged down in arguing their points or their positions, as we like to call it. And this happens not only in the, the co-parenting issues, but also in court. Right. People get so busy arguing their positions that they're not problem solving. Right, right. I mean, I always say, ask yourself, therefore what? You know, oh, I, I, I can't do the exchange. I can't give you that weekend. Okay, therefore what? Right. You can't you can't give that weekend. Therefore, is there another alternative that would work? Is there, yeah. you know, or sometimes they're saying something that really has no, it's just an argument of, well, I don't want him to see your dad because I think your dad's a bad influence. Right. Okay, well. Yeah, what that's not a that? solution. That's just a refusal to cooperate. And in our experience of just an all out refusal to to cooperate builds you a bad reputation in the court. Right. Yeah. And it's bad for your kids. Yeah. So let's say the communication goes well and uh, uh, and you, you 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 do what you said before, which is that you say, well, look, you know, uh, 
the tickets are not refundable. If there's some way you could reimburse me for the costs, or we could do that on another day, or uh, I could give you, you can pay me for the tickets and you can take them to the train museum with your dad. Right. You know, which, whatever you want to do is, is fine. Uh, you know, if he comes back with a with a recrimination, with a well, you're just you know none of those is okay. You're just being a pill. Uh, a pill. Uh, then your response should be short and sweet. Then your response should be okay. Oh, I'm sorry, I can't. I can't do that. I I can't I can't change weekends with you. Right, and then after that, don't you don't need to engage in any more right. argument. Right, and because if, if they just say, "Oh, none of that's going to work," you're going to be a, you're being a pill, blah blah. You writing back and say, "I don't know why you're being so difficult. I gave you three perfectly good options." Blah yeah. blah blah blah. That doesn't help. Right. If that person, if that person comes back and they're being totally ridiculous and argumentative like that, you just need to cut it off. On the one hand, you want to be clear in your communication. You don't want to be wishy washy. Uh, but on the other hand, you don't want to be kind of testifying and you right. don't, and you don't want to be needlessly oppositional uh either uh so there's kind of a fine art and right. it, it really requires some thought yeah yeah it does i mean it's i have people that say i wish i could just word it so easily like that like you do and it's like well this is 12 years right 12 years of of just looking at communication and also i can tell you the other thing that's interesting about working with a one-on-one -on -one client is every every person is different and every X is different. And so what you tell one person to respond that works mm -hmm. may not work in another situation. Right. So you have to learn the nuances of the party's personalities. And what I always tell people is, if you can start to learn the concept of what I'm trying to teach you through hands-on, you know, um, uh, um, modifying your communication with you, you start to learn the concept. And as we go through it, we see the other parents' reactions. And then I can tell you how to adapt, how to adjust to accomplish what you're right. trying to accomplish. And then, you know, and, and then it, you'll start to get it on your own. But I would say that takes most people usually about six months, honestly, to start to really know, okay, what would Tammy yeah, this say? Yeah, is, this is know? high level, and, and yeah. I, th I think it's it would be good to have a coach to help you with it. Yeah. All right, so we hope this has been helpful, as always, and um, we thank you for joining us. If you're watching us on YouTube, please uh, subscribe to the channel so that you get notified when new videos come out. Don't forget to leave a comment, like the video. We'd love to hear your feedback, your thoughts on it, if you have any good, bad experiences or whatever. If you are listening to us in iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, one of the podcast um, players, please uh, rate and review us and uh, subscribe so that you get notified as new episodes come out. And thanks for joining us. Thank you. We'll grow.